What is up everybody? I'm no Lex Given, and in this video we are gonna look at a Share Bear game where honestly things go pretty well for us throughout the course of the game. We are going to start by picking up Humpty Dumpty, which is a pretty good unit to pick up to start things off. And we're not going to have it cracked a bunch of times like yesterday's video. We're just going to be able to play a strong early game and transition that into a strong end game as Share Bear. So that's the goal. Um, also, apologies if you can hear it, but I have my window open and there's some type of like turkey vulture outside or something, but it almost sounds like it's laughing. Uh, it's kind of crazy, so um, it might even be fun if you guys can hear it. Um, picking up a pair of dwarves is really good. Have to decide if we want to shard the Humpty Dumpty, but I do generally like dwarves on Share Bear. Obviously, they are a little bit weaker now because there's nothing really to do on level 4 while you're playing dwarves now. However, dwarves are still strong in the early game, and they're definitely still what, what Share Bear is looking for, because you can just beat up the lobby. Everybody else gets a bunch of gold, so the lobby is a little bit supercharged in that manner, and you can um, just go into dwarves without too much gold investment. It's not something that has to, like, scale for the future. Um... Though, it depends. We'll, we'll see what we roll into here. And we're going to start by rolling the dice. And I do think we could pick up a Polywoggle here as well. A little bit of a speculative play. Or we could also just go for the pair of goats and just play like reasonable units. But I'm going to go for the Polywoggle pickup and then that's it. Uh, no reason to lock another tiny i'm not like super into dwarves at the moment but basically we'll see where the where the chips fall um could even frontline the polywoggle i'm basically just hoping that the polywoggle doesn't attack doesn't need to get used in this combat we're still up a unit because we are share bear and my opponent is not and looks like both myself and my opponent are going to be crack a lack in our eggs which is going to make the computer freeze for a second um just that egg animation always gets me for some reason and then it does look like we will be tying oh no no we win because of that polywoggle in the back so there we go uh pretty nice stuff there um on this one well i said i wasn't really considering going into dwarves but a doubly plus a spinning gold does seem like a good way to keep winning uh to some extent we will uh, get the spinning gold potentially go for the polywoggle sleigh but basically we just have a strong board this turn even for just having our egg get cracked and i think trying to just play something strong so that we get three extra gold next turn is a nice way to continue to stay on top in this lobby so that is the plan my opponent does not have too much going on here it does look like my doubly will be able to get it done unfortunately we wind up attacking into oh wait they no 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 i was gonna say yeah my opponent had like a few one health things but they all wind up going away at some point in there but we got the spinning gold that's the important thing nothing else really matters there didn't get the polywoggle sleigh but did indeed get the spinning gold and then we see princess white and honestly, I don't think that's a bad pickup here. I think I'm into another spinning gold, just using our share bear gold as far as the uh, spinning gold is concerned. And then maybe I'll try Princess White again. I really have not tried to make Princess White in a long, make her work rather in a long time. Uh, but I think it, it, it can potentially be done. Um, I'm not going to buy another Polywoggle because I'm not really looking to triple it. I'm just looking to pick up some dwarves here. And when we see another doubly, that's going to be a pretty nice uh, power spike for this turn again. And the idea is we could maybe pick up the uh, spinning gold gold again. So this is all kind of the idea. Going to sell out of the Polywoggle even uh, now that we're on 3.1. There's not a great place to play it. And it's just so much better if we try to continue to uh, win our combats rather than Polywoggle Slay for the future. So playing this one pretty close to the vest here. Though my opponent has some rather large royals, which is unfortunate. We do get okay combat RNG to start off, but then things get a little bit lucky. And I think this is like the only game of this game where we get 
less than stellar combat RNG. You'll see what I mean about that in the future, but that does wind up balancing out in the end, and we get some nice combat RNG later on. We can pick up a Lucky, that's another Dwarf, and then a free roll, try to find some more Dwarves, and we hit a Doubly, which we can then use to pick up a Treasure, as well as that 1414. And I like the Sting alongside the um, Polywoggle, so I think that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to sell off the, um, uh, the Goat and pick up the Polywoggle, and not going to play the Polywoggle this turn, because I want to use that on 4.0, so that way we can get a 5 drop for free. But I think that we're still decently powerful this turn, with a 14-13, a 14-14, and a 7-7. Those are some, some pretty powerful units. My opponent also with a Sting, though, and with an upgraded Crafty and a uh, Engine Sarcophagus. So this Word Dragon is definitely doing it. They are looking really, really strong right here. And that is going to be enough to do us in. So we're going to take 8 damage from this Horde Dragon kind of popping off here on level 3. But we'll see what we can make happen. And we only need to purchase 2 more Dwarves to get a free level 3 treasure. Uh, so definitely going to be keeping my eye out for Dwarves. I think I'll probably pick up this Tiny here. It seems fine. Um, it makes a pair of tinies and then gives us a, a little bit towards the uh, treasure for white. And we've got some options here now. We could lock this shop or we could sell Fanny. That's the only dwarf we don't have a pair of. Or we could just cast this Luna's Grace if we're planning on locking. And I don't think locking is the uh, craziest idea here. And uh, the only question becomes what to Luna's Grace. We can either Luna's Grace... Um, well, we can really do it on anything. Um, the one benefit to trying to put in the Tiny this turn is that we'll also pump up the Crafties and it will give us a treasure. So all of that could be pretty reasonable. Um, but... We'll see. We'll see uh, how things shake out here. I'm just going to lock this. We'll flip over the Princess White next turn, and then we'll have some definite direction based off the polywoggle of where we want to go from there. But does look like Dwarves might be able to make it work. Maybe we'll be able to get really lucky with this polywoggle. I said that we do get lucky this game, so... We'll see what that means in just a moment. Doubly is going to do uh, some nice work there, soaking up a Court Wizard hit, though. Um, I think we are going to wind up losing this one, because my opponent is just a little bit too big for us with those Court Wizard triggers. But we got the Polywoggle Slay. That's what's important. And we also find a True Love's Kiss immediately in the shop after that. And that's going to give us a Jormungand. So that's a good unit for the time being. Definitely doesn't help on the Dwarves plan. I'll pick up the Tiny. And with Ring of Meteors, I'm definitely looking to still make Dwarves happen. And we'll see how we can do that. But then I find a Bad Moon off of the uh, Princess White. And now I think I might move back into Slay. Or not back into Slay, but into Slay for the first time. I guess Polywoggle was a slaying unit. Uh, but I'll pick up the Riverwash Mermaid that is just conveniently in this shop with the Jormungand in it. And we'll try to see what else we can make happen. Uh, I'm considering making use of the Sting slot with Doubly, though... I don't know if that is exactly the direction that I want to go. I'm, I'm going to play around with some different options here before deciding on uh, just moving doubly back into slot uh, three with the fanny support and then just going for lucky on the sting plus river wash mermaid option. And okay, great. My camera did not go out on us. Let's make sure that doesn't happen again. Great. And the... Uh, bird outside has calmed down a lot so uh that's good too but yeah i think this is a pretty good start here with this um huge uh jormungand my opponent uh emoting there not realizing that their medusa is going to be able to kill off my jormungand so this combat works out perfectly well for them and they'll even have a prized pig survive and uh <clears throat> 
I'm sure they're happy about that one. Now, interestingly, because we've picked up the Ring of Meteors, it's going to be really hard to make Lightning Dragon work. Um, we could make Grim Soul work, uh, which we'll see right here. But Lightning Dragon's really awkward. Lightning Dragon, I'm going to want to purchase because it's a good unit, uh, but we're going to have to bench it because... Um, yeah, there's just no way that we can play it on the current board. So I am going to have to try to find a way to grab another treasure to make this lightning dragon work. That's why I'm going to hang on to the pair of luckies. But the idea here, it's kind of kind of interesting. The uh, Grim Soul will die at the start of combat. And then it's 50-50 to give plus 2 plus 3, which turns into plus 4 plus 6 on the doubly or it can give that bonus to Jormungand. Um, but yeah, kind of an interesting setup here where we're like maybe scaling a doubly just to start things off and uh, it's going to immediately die to the Ring of Meteors. But that will give us a good Jormungand to start the fight off. And hopefully if we can avoid some Medusas, Jormungand should be enough to just carry us from this point, which gives us the freedom to purchase more XP and uh, pick up some more speculative units like the Lightning Dragon. So that is kind of the idea here. Jormungand, 42-42, up to 65-59. It's not only that, it's the fact that this Jormungand is also scaling really good combat RNG, by the way, right there, that the Fanny was able to take out the Brave Princess. That's actually going to allow us to win this fight. Jormungand's just so strong at this stage of the game, and it's scaling because of the Bad Moon. We almost take out my opponent's, um, uh, uh, the, the Potion Master. We almost take out the Potion Master entirely, but we're going to fall a little bit short. Uh, I am somewhat tempted by the True Love's Kiss, but I think we already have this Jormungand, and generally when I am True Love's Kissing, I'm either doing that because I'm half bowling, or because I am looking for direction. And in this game, I don't really think I'm looking for direction. Again, we could like pick up a five drop, True Love's Kiss It. I don't think that's what we need to do this game. I think that what we need to do is, um, yeah, just, just make some slays happen. And we can do some nice work here with the Lancelot plus the Sting plus the Burning Palm. That's going to give us a unit that is at 23 attack already. And if the Grim Soul lands on the Lancelot, then that's going to bring it up to 25 attack. So what I do is I move the Riverwash Mermaid over. So now the Grim Soul is 50-50 to land onto the Lancelot. And not 1 in 3, which it would have been if the doubly was also being supported by the Riverwash Mermaid. So 50-50 to activate Lancelot. If we get that, we'll be able to take out the uh, Ring of Meteors this turn, which that's pretty good as well. That's going to mean that we can then start to play this Lightning Dragon again. So we're figuring some stuff out, and Grimsoul is indeed going to land on Lancelot, and then Lance is going to slay again. So we've got a mighty large Jormungand once more, and it looks like that'll be enough to win the combat, especially when my opponent's uh, Rotten Applewood has to attack because of their power orb on uh, the treasures slot. So that's really good for us. We get a tier 5 treasure, and Staff of the Old Toad replacing Ring of Meteors is quite the upgrade. We'll be able to roll now, look for more Riverwash Mermaids, look for more Jormungans, look for some Baba Yagas as well. And uh, the only question here is, do we buy this XP but if we purchase it, then we're not really going to have that much purchasing power for the rest of the turn, so I'm going to decide against it. I feed doubly to the Kraken, should have fed the um, uh, Crafty to the Kraken, but uh, no matter, this is looking quite strong here regardless. I am trying to see if there's like a feasible way to use the Sting Slot. Uh, but I think we just have to use the Sting Slot on Grim Soul, unfortunately. We'll be able to pick up another Lightning Dragon, so... Excuse me, this is going to mean that we backline the Jormungand, and it'll still get some, some nice hits there. And this will really allow us to grow our three Slay units that matter. And, um... I think... <clears throat> excuse me, I think overall be pretty nice for us. So... 
really big board here, to be totally honest, um, with a bunch of, um, like, a Jormungand and a Lancelot already, and the rest of the lobby is on, like, 5.1 at this point in the game here. Uh, Lightning Dragon's gonna get in, steal my opponent's, um, uh, Baba Yaga, and then their, uh, Medusa misses. So that is absolutely great for us. Jormungand is gonna be able to kill Medusa, and that is basically the only thing that matters in this combat. Jormungand even gets another hit, another chance to grow with Bad Moon, but I was really just worried about this opponent's Medusas, and we were able to avoid that with the Jormungand in the back line as well. Deck of many things is okay. We could toss the Sting, and that seems reasonable, and then we'll throw in another Grim Soul. We do find the Baba Yaga right after that, though, so definitely going to want to put that in, and now probably just rolling for another Grim Soul, though Riverwash Mermaid also ain't too shabby. I'll sell off my remaining dwarves and put the Riverwash Mermaid back in, just lining up my units in case we want to float this treasure. Uh... Fool's Gold, yeah, um, we could potentially get the Fool's Gold in there, replacing the deck of many things, though. I don't think it's super necessary either. If we wanted to take the Fool's Gold, we would maybe um, float it and uh, replace the deck of many things, but I don't think we're going to go for that. And I'm actually going to frontline my Jormungand, too, so that way we can continue to scale it. And that is, uh, like, an interesting angle that we can play here with the Bad Moon plus Jormungand. It won't scale every time it gets plus 20. Like, it won't get plus 1, plus 2 every time the Lightning Dragon slays. But it will get plus 1, plus 2 every time it slays. And it's also getting some additional stats from the Riverwash Mermaid and the Baba Yaga. So we're actually scaling our Jormungand, and that can be useful sometimes, um, especially when you've got players that have a bunch of soul tacks. Uh, this player has double soul tack, but they also pigomorph my lightning dragon, so honestly, that's pretty lucky. Um, we are going to get in with Lancelot, and then get in with our large Jormungand, and then my opponent snipes the pig. So really, really great combat RNG for us. That is going to be quite nice, and it does look like Lancelot will get one more trigger there to continue to grow, and we are just continuing to grow and be quite powerful in this lobby. A 70 power Lancelot is quite good. Looking for Grim Souls and Jormungans and Baba Yagas, and we find them, and we could take the Grim Soul if the plan is to skip the treasure, but there's still a really good tier 4 treasure that we'd like. So I'm going to roll the die. It is a pretty good chance to hit, and I think there's just a chance that I don't want to skip this treasure. So I roll the die, hit the Jormungand, then I can pick up the Grim Soul, take the Horn of Olympus, ditching the probably the deck of many things. I could toss the Bad Moon, though. We have scaled pretty significantly to this point. I don't want to lose the staff, um, but this is honestly a pretty tricky one in terms of what treasure we actually need to get rid of, and I think I'm going to get rid of the deck here. I'll throw this Jormungand back in. It's a 21 uh, power Jormungand thanks to the um, roll the die, um, so that's pretty silly as well, and... Um, Honestly, looking pretty, pretty strong now. We'll get in with the Lightning Dragon, and um, then we will even slay with the Grim Soul, which is pretty incredible because the Grim Soul actually does have a slay ability now because it's being supported by uh, River Mermaid and Baba Yaga. So that is just going to really help us continue to scale through the rest of the game, and uh, all of that is really good. Our main Jormungand now up into the 70s itself, uh, so just, just a really powerful squad of units here. Uh, rolling for Jormungand, Baba Yaga, Riverwash Mermaid potentially. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this was the player that had a bunch of Medusas last time that we played them, so I do think that a Shrivel is in order. That could definitely be really good for us. It could also be good to play a second Jormungand, 
but it's also pretty tempting to play all of these Baba Yagas right now because we do have that Horn of Olympus. And um, yeah, basically what's what's really crazy about this game uh, that we'll see here in a second, uh, but the Lightning Dragon is going to be able to get in and that hits the one in three. And not only that, but the Grim Soul also attacks and slays on the 50-50. So just really good combat RNG. The Lance didn't get the memo. The Lance misses on the Burning Tree, but it's not going to matter. The German Gand is going to have enough stats to clean it up. We bring our opponent down to one. They do have some nice treasures, so we do have to keep them in mind, but they are down to one. And this game's almost over. Uh, I really want to roll for Jormungand and Baba Yaga, so I keep rolling there, and we find the Jormungand. And Phoenix Feather is really going to help as far as preventing different potential scams and things that we could see from my opponents. So I think it's time to get rid of the Bad Moon. I'm still going to hang on to this staff because I want to find more Baba Yagas and River Wash Mermaids. Though I also like more Jormungands. This one is tough. Do I want to uh, lock? I mean, I could roll the die, try to get the one in five, and then I could lock the shop. Or I could just keep rolling because I think that there's more better supports that we can find. We have the Phoenix Feather. We're probably okay. And my best bet is probably just to try to keep scaling. So I roll one more time and then I'm going to lock a River Wash Mermaid. And that works out really, really well for my supports. Now they'll all be double River Wash plus Baba Yaga supported. So they'll all have four River Wash Mermaid triggers on them. And from there we'll just roll for more Baba Yagas basically is the plan. Lightning Dragon is going to get in. It doesn't hit either of the ranged units but Grim Soul also slays again. Grim Soul finds the one in four to slay and just completely pop off and now we've got Jormungand and we've got Phoenix Feather so we ain't going nowhere. Uh, my opponent will actually be able to take out Jormungand with all of these ranged units um, so it's a good thing that we have the Phoenix Feather here. Jormungand will come back and then continue to grow. Um, so yeah, pretty nice for us there, but that is going to be a win. Not quite a kill onto Celestial Tiger. We've brought everybody to the brink, but have not quite found these kills yet. I'll roll a little bit more and looking for... Baba Yaga, there we go. And uh, now we can replace this Staff of the Old Toad with Evil Eye. And that's kind of what I mean about this game just working out extremely lucky for us. Now we basically just have the ideal Slay setup. We've got the Lightning Dragon to potentially grow Jormungand at the start of combat. That's going to make Jormungand get to crazy levels. We've got Grim Soul, if something goes wrong. We've got Lancelot, which is almost at 100 in his own right, in case something goes wrong. And then we actually have a Jormungand that is starting in the 150s, so it's going to be the Phoenix Feather target regardless. We don't have to worry about anything weird where the... Lancelot or the Lightning Dragon is what's coming back on the Phoenix Feather instead. Nope, this is just going to be an extremely large Jormungand domination here. So we will start off with this Riverwash Mermaid getting in here. Uh, Robin Wood triggers onto the Jormungand, though those don't matter. And then, uh, do we get first attack or no? We do, and unfortunately we miss the slay with Grim Soul on this one, but Lancelot is now up into the 200s and still growing. Um, I'd love even if this Lightning Dragon could attack again, that would be really sweet. Jormungand's gonna get in there against the Rotten Applewood, it will die and then come back and get big enough that it doesn't even matter that it just died, it's, it's back up into the 200s. And now the Lightning Dragon, oh no, I'm sorry, uh, Jormungand gets to attack again because of the uh, Phoenix Feather trigger. That's uh, kind of a weird uh, interaction there, but that's how it works. Then the Lightning Dragon gets in and slays again. So pretty great stuff. And uh, we'll be ending this combat with the uh, Riverwash Mermaids in the back, so nothing else is going to scale, but 
we still scaled pretty fine against this ghost for sure. We're going to have a Lance up into the 250s. Lance now bigger than Jormungand, uh, but that's fine. That's totally fine. And uh, we should be able to connect with something good against this Zelhua. We beat them not too long ago. Uh, we'll have to see how much they have scaled. I'm really just looking for a scam spell. I forgot about that. I was supposed to say that. When I was rubbing the uh, shard, what I was saying is, well, the only thing that we can really do to improve our board at this point is find a Pigomorph, and then I immediately find it and, and just continue to be quite lucky. Uh, so that is going to be how we finish off the turn here. And I think uh, no reason really even to lock this Riverwash Mermaid. If we have to play another turn, we're just going to want to roll for more scam spells. That's the only real thing that we can do at this point in the game. Uh, but honestly, this has all been pretty fantastic for us. So we'll see how much bigger we can make these units get. We've got the Lightning Dragon getting in to start. My opponent does not have any Soul Tax. Lightning Dragon only has one thing, now made two, that they can connect on, but it does get the one in three regardless. And then is Grim Soul going to get in and slay? You better believe it. So Grim Soul gets in and slays, which is just a bunch of triggers. These are just the slay triggers right now. This, this is just Grimsoul slaying, and then uh, it's it's uh, also had the uh, the last breath go off. So we've got this insanely big Jormungand, and we're going to be able to battle with my opponent's Echo Wood there in the back line and survive via the Phoenix Feather, and then that will be enough to win the game. So there we go, Jormungand up in the 2400s, a pretty good showing for the Slay Comp, and that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lux Given. Peace.